to VSurf Canada's community e-talk show with our new series, Youth and Mental Health. A quick recap of last week's episode, Newcomers and Immigrants to Canada, we had a great discussion with Dr. Sujoy and Anu during the Candid Talk segment. They shared the stress immigration brings to individuals and families, difficulties when settling, populations for the most vulnerable, and lastly, strategies to cope with the challenges people may be facing while settling in their new home. This week's episode is on the COVID-19 impact on mental health. Dr. Sujoy will be analyzing how the recent pandemic has affected people's mental health and overall well-being. First, let's check out what's going on in the News Corner with Jethan. Hello everyone, this is Chetan and welcome to the news this week. The Government of Canada is addressing and overcoming the unique barriers faced by newcomers, particularly significant for racialized newcomer women, which have increased since the onset of pandemic and its disproportionate impact on women. The government announced support for 11 innovative projects through the racialized newcomer women pilot with $2 million in federal funding. In other news, a new comprehensive and community-driven report shows that taking a wraparound approach to healthcare for newcomers, including hyperlocal strategies to deal with the stigma around diseases, is the best way to ensure people can address their health issues as soon as possible and in comprehensive ways. Moving on, with $96,000 in funding from the City of Calgary's Change Can't Wait initiative, the Healing Centered Cooperative is designing a music and breathwork program to help people facing mental health challenges from the pandemic. The first phase of the project focuses on immigrant and refugee communities. Christine Gibson, a family doctor and the founder of Healing Centered Cooperative, said that while there is a huge need for mental health support in general since the pandemic, with high rates of anxiety and stress across the country, these issues are compounded in certain communities. If you want to know more about any of these news articles in this section, Head over to our social media feeds and you'll find links to all of these articles. Now let's head into the unscripted talk segment with Anu and a special guest of the week. Thank you. Hello everyone and welcome to the VSurf Canada Community eTalk. Thank you so much Jatin for giving a great overview of the current news surrounding our topic for the week. We all are facing the unprecedented global health crisis and COVID-19 is definitely a very current topic that we brought today. So even though the world is slowly recovering from the pandemic and adjusting to the new normal, it is no surprise that the COVID-19 has made a huge negative impact on Canadians' mental health. A recent poll showed that one in 10 Canadians said that their mental health had actually worsened a lot as a result of the COVID-19. Statistics Canada reported that the prevalence of mental health orders is more than four times higher because of the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. If we were to take the six domains of mental health, which is depression, anxiety, uh, irritability, attention span, um, hyperactivity, and obsessions, we found that 70% of the children reported deterioration in at least one of these domains. So this is actually a very alarming statistics to hear, and one can only emphasize the impact of COVID-19 on the Canadians' mental health and well-being. Um, changes in behaviors, uh, thoughts, feelings, uh, can be a very, very normal response to stressful situations. But nevertheless, such symptoms can undermine the well-being and the quality of life and may create a need for mental health support. So we are happy to share that We Surf Canada has been dedicating mental health series since the past year. In 2020, we brought COVID-19 wellness series in uh, the February of uh, 2021. We Surf Canada collaborated with Bell Canada and uh, we brought the COVID-19 wellness series in uh, support of the South Asian communities. And again, now we are bringing our youth and mental health series, which is a 10-part series. 
And uh, so We Surf Canada has really been dedicating all the recent programming to support these vulnerable groups and against the fight of uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So it is really essential to look out for each other and lend a helping hand uh, in a way that we can become stronger and more resilient in the future. To get a more in-depth look into the impacts of COVID-19, I would like to invite Dr. Sujoy Ray to the show for an unscripted conversation. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome again to the VSurf Canada uh, Community eTalk. Uh, again, we are very happy uh, to have Dr. Sujoy Ray with us. And thank you so much, Sujoy, for being part of our series. Uh, and we begin uh, our today's uh, candid conversation. And I'll jump right into our first uh, question. Uh, as you know, that everyone's lives have really been changed across the globe trying to adjust to the recent pandemic uh, caused by the coronavirus, also known as the COVID-19. So um, why don't we actually first discuss uh, the virus in itself and what does that really entail and what are the physical uh, illnesses uh, that correlate uh, before that, before we get into the mental piece of it, uh, Maybe just highlight the physical aspect and then maybe we'll uh, jump on to the mental aspect of it as well. Sure, sure. That's fine. Yes. So uh, this is uh, basically the question is that COVID-19 disease and any other physical illnesses which, are, which correlates with the mental illness for COVID-19, if you could just explain uh, that in a little bit of detail. So, I mean, COVID-19 is mainly a respiratory illness, as we know, it's, a, uh, you know, uh, related to cough, cold, those kinds of things. And apart from that, you have many other symptoms, but it's mainly a breathing uh, issue. Uh, but it is, uh, you, I'm sure you must have seen on the uh, news reports that there are many different uh, ways in which COVID manifests itself. Um, there, it, it has affected different organ systems in different people, whether it is the brain or whether it is, uh, you know, even uh, uh, the stomach. So they, they, there have been different kinds of manifestations of COVID-19 as, as a physical illness. And uh, I, I, I think to the best of my knowledge, people are still, you know, scientists and authorities are still struggling to understand how many more ways in which COVID can uh, manifest itself in the human body. So, the physical part of COVID, although mostly it's a respiratory breathing illness, it is varied according to uh, pre it varies in its presentation. Um, and 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 anybody who already has a phys physical illness, whether it is diabetes, hypertension, who has asthma, or somebody who has uh, you know uh, uh, things like if uh, somebody is just elderly or well, those kinds of situation people are more vulnerable for COVID-19 in physical illnesses as well as uh, physical situations like being elderly. Uh, and apart from that, now COVID itself has one uh, uh, symptoms as far as mental illness is concerned. So it has some direct effects on the brain, uh, which is which which can cause uh, you know altered consciousness and. Usually, you see these things in uh, people who are at a very serious stage of COVID illness. So, whether it is altered consciousness or uh, altered sense of where a person is, confusion. And apart from that, uh, the uh, what should I say? The shock of being uh, diagnosed with COVID or knowing that COVID is, uh, you know, it, somebody knows that he is suffering from COVID and then he knows how bad the situation is and the uncertainty anxiety the low uh, the sadness the depression it can bring so that is a mental illness or uh, emotional or mental uh, symptoms in response to covid as such which is not directly caused by covid but uh, you have it as a as a reaction to it yes uh, dr stewart you have actually touched upon this was what i was just going to share with you was that, uh, you know, from Statistics Canada and uh, Sick Kids Hospital earlier that we mentioned, the research has shown that how much 
of the mental health is being impacted by COVID-19. So maybe you can just highlight like what are the specific effects uh, that COVID-19 can have on the mental state of uh, one's mind. I know you touched upon it a little bit briefly, but maybe if you can just elaborate a little bit more. So uh, it depends on different, the situation of the person. Um, you know, if if you have, if if uh, you're diagnosed with COVID, the first thing is a, is a bit of a shock. It's a bit of a, uh, a disbelief. It's, it's, it's a lot like, you know, the other types of bad situation, like uh, losing a loved one or having a death in the family is a shocking type of a thing. Um, especially it could be more shocking if you think that you were uh, not vulnerable or you could could not have got covid let's say if it's a doctor who's working in an icu he's with all even with all the precautions he or she knows that you know i could get covid and even if that person gets diagnosed he'd, he'd be more mentally prepared to do it but uh, prepared to take the diagnosis he'd, prepare, he'd have a lot of knowledge it's still a shock no doubt about it but again people who would think that they should not have gotten COVID. They took their precautions. They had their masks on. They uh, did all the distancing and all those uh, precautions which have been recommended like hand washing. And still they get COVID. So it comes as a bit of a shock and a sudden surge of anxiety that, you know, it's uh, how, how could I get it or why did I get it? So that shock is there and uh, that, that's the first thing. And then apart from that, there is uncertainty uh, because this is a new virus. The research is still evolving. And although it is quite clear that the death rate is the uh, people who recover spontaneously are much more than people who uh, get hospitalized or who die, still you have seen, uh, you know, you it's no longer the very simple thing that only elderly people or only people with diseases are going to uh, become and in, in, get into a serious condition. Even other people are getting into a serious condition. So that ongoing uh, 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 anxiety that anxiety is still there that just because i am not elderly does not mean that i cannot land up in the hospital so that that is the anxiety which keeps going on and then there is sadness and there is you know sometimes a, seri- uh, a sort of a guilt sometimes a sort of blame uh, blaming uh, oneself that you know why did i get it and this is a kind of situation where uh, you your anxiety doesn't end with yourself you're worried about spreading it to your family, your loved ones, your workplace, uh, unless the your, the employer makes arrangements or empl- uh, the organization makes arrangements, you could end up, you know, uh, maybe not losing your job, but still uh, being out of the job for a long time. So there are all these social and familiar implications that makes you even more anx- anxious and uh, isolated. You, you are, uh, I mean, physically you are isolated because of obvious reasons. In, in one room or quarantine or whatever it is and then you feel isolation away from your normal routine so the that isolation leads to a lot of anxiety blame guilt and this all this uh, can affect you know appetite it can affect sleep so the, these are the mental uh, manifestations in very intense situations thoughts of dying thoughts of killing oneself thoughts of not wanting to live anymore so those those are the things which can happen to people and as I was saying earlier, directly if you see COVID, yes, has affected the brain and it has some psychiatric or brain related or nerve related neurological uh, symptoms as well. And it can worsen outcomes as well, uh, especially in those people who've been admitted in ICUs and they're already vulnerable. So this this is how we, you know, the COVID can affect the mental and the emotional health in so many ways. Yeah, and I've also felt like COVID in itself has actually, uh, even if somebody who has not got COVID, it has really impacted those people as well because of the fact like their routines, their lives got disrupted or changed or they were not able to meet their loved ones. Or even if uh, their family member had COVID, they want to help them out, they can't help them out. So it is, uh, the I, I found like the, 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 the reach uh, the, of the impact has been really far and beyond even for the people who did not get COVID. So it has been definitely a huge global crisis and and that's one of the reasons why we are trying to do everything what is possible and help out uh, each and every one of us. 
So uh, I, I just want to just uh, bring another aspect of COVID uh, impact. Uh, like we know that it, in general way that it can uh, impact a lot of people. But do you think that it has impacted uh, the children and the youth uh, a lot more in terms of the uh, mental health and well-being? Um, or in other words, let me put this uh, question that uh, what other groups of people have been really negatively impacted more um, because of the COVID-19 pandemic? So yes, I agree with you because uh, children, it's especially uh, difficult. Uh, they always, you know, children have a set routine going to school at a particular time. Then they, the time at school is fixed to do different things. Um, and then they come back at time. Then they have time at home. Now everything because of COVID, schools being closed and, uh, you know, all that children being locked in their home is difficult for them. They may, I mean, of course, they may see it as an enjoyment that, you know, they don't have to go to school. But if the routine gets disturbed, it's very difficult for children, you know, they, they would feel emotionally upset. It would be difficult for parents to keep them in, uh, you know, keep them happy or keep them in check. And especially those children who already have, uh, who suffer from any uh, 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 mental health disorders, let's say uh, children with special needs, autism, uh, uh, attention deficit disorder, uh, or what, what we call as ADD or AD, ADHD, those kind of children have even more difficulties or those children who, uh, you know, school is not just a place where they learn, it's a place where they meet people, their skills are improved and then suddenly they are not able to go over there. Of course, parents and family can do a lot to help them at home, but uh, mm -hmm. still, there is no substitute for school and not everybody has the uh, access to online learning. And either ways, even that is not very, uh, that's not a, that's also not a substitute right. for actually going to school. So definitely children have been uh, very badly affected. Apart from that, anybody basically who had a routine and is now, uh, you know, facing a change in their routine or who's facing an uncertainty, working class people, uh, what I was saying earlier is if their jobs are going down yep. uh, and other people who are susceptible to loneliness, elderly people who have become lonely, who are away from their, those elderly people who are living alone, especially away from, uh, you know, children and family, they would have earlier met so, social lives, met people, their uh, friends in the park and all that. Now, suddenly they can't do it. Again, WhatsApp, phone, Zoom call, whatever it is, it's not an actual substitute. So those people who have, those those people are again uh, affected the most. Um, almost every demographic and every profession is being affected. Uh, yeah. There is no particular person who's more affected or who's more uh, immune to this. So, so the, uh, that is uh, that is there. Almost every group are being affected. But I would say that those people who are at the forefront, uh, whether it is doctors and nurses, uh, it's sanitation workers, police who's involved in you know imposing lockdowns and all, they see these things happening. I mean, uh, they witness death uh, or whatever it is. I mean, uh, whether it is death or whether it is the anxiety that like sanitation workers, for example, are directly exposed. Doctors are directly, nurses are directly exposed. So those people who are at the front of it, they uh, they would they would be more susceptible to uh, mental ill. I mean uh, uh, difficulties in their mental health, both because they are actually more closer. I mean closer to the virus, and also because they are seeing the death and destruction and the difficulties. No, actually, I think uh, it would be very apt to say that we cannot thank our COVID heroes like all the doctors, all the frontline workers each and every one of us uh, in whichever country they were they have really risen above and beyond and they have really been our heroes and they have really helped us out through and uh, we know it has been very traumatic for them but still day in day out they have gone into the battlefield as you say and you know helped each one of us uh, out in this uh, global uh, crisis so uh, this topic is obviously it's uh, COVID is still very much here, even though with the vaccines and everything, it is kind of uh, hopefully we are going to see a new normal coming in shortly. But still, uh, the issue is still very current and it's happening in the society and it is it's still prevalent in a lot of countries uh, around the world. So um, I think one of the things that Dr. Sujoy, we would really highlight 
we would like you to highlight is that do you have any suggestions on how individuals can take care of your, of their mental health um, during this COVID-19 uh, scenario? Because uh, it still is, like I said, it's still very much here and people still have to be cautious and cognizant and uh, uh, how do they get over this hump? is um, if you can put it in your simple words uh, that would be a great help to our audience so i would say that the first thing is to limit the amount of information they have uh, i mean take the essential information whatever if there's a lockdown in your area you need to know when uh, to when is the lockdown uh, where is the vaccination center what is the so uh, 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 what are the facts about the vaccination what are the precautions you have to follow mask hand washing distancing whatever it is so take the news which is essential uh, because uh, i mean unfortunately uh, media is also having a role in this and they are you know they, their coverage is extensive they're covering deaths and uh, pictures of all sorts of uh, 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 dead bodies and this and that which is not okay it is it is fine to tell the uh, you know statistics that is their job but it doesn't help us if we have to know statistics all the time we don't really need to know it uh, of course we all know that it's a dangerous problem nobody's taking it lightly that's uh, more than enough we don't need to know exactly how many people died how many people are uh, you know ill we, yes we should know practical things that god forbid if there is a problem we should know whether where is the nearest hospital is there a bed vacant or not those kinds of things are there and as i said about vaccinations about what is the lockdown rule so limit yourself to uh, things which are important mm -hmm. uh, th that kind of a news and that to the news should come from verified organization verified portals every country has its national health portal or health uh, ministry those kinds of things not random gossip and you should not contribute to it either you should not forward things uh, whether it is whatsapp or whatever it is without knowing the authenticity and it i i think in quite a few countries it's also a criminal offense to uh, spread uh, you know misinformation uh, then uh, again with the making up theory see scientists have said how covid spreads what covid is what what are the issues with it so if there is a proper uh, you know uh, some statements given by the health again by the health ministry or renowned scientists you take that rather than spinning theories about you know what it is and how it can happen uh, or or rumor mongering so that should be avoided both doing it and being away from it um apart from that uh, you have you should set a routine at home if 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 it if your routine has broken down uh, let's say if you're not able to go to your work still try to make a routine every day at home so if you have a predictable routine that you know every day you're going to do this and then next you're going to do that you have something to look forward to so you can make your use of uh, one person can make use of their time in a more productive way that is important and keeping in touch with family friends okay you cannot meet and as i said uh, you know calls is not a substitute to physically meeting but whatever you can do you should meet so more the more sense of belonging you have whether it is family friends community uh, and you know so uh, just just talking to people getting their news sharing uh, uh, their your thoughts with them that will help to uh, sort of keep you in touch with reality and at the same time you'll feel that you know people there are people to take care of you and vice versa for the others whom you are talking to and ultimately if things anxiety is out, going out of hand and you know things simple measures are not helping it's always best to seek help from a mental health professional counselor psychologist whatever it is if it really needs if it's a proper uh, you know a mental illness which has set in if it's depression which needs treatment or whatever it is there's no shame in going up and asking for help definitely it can be treated all right this actually brings us to, to a close of our uh, topic today but Dr. Sujoy, I know that during this uh, 18, last 18 months, it has been very challenging for you as well, um, that you have uh, helped a lot of uh, your patients uh, going online, helping them with the Zoom classes or uh, tutorials or counseling, whatever you can call it. But uh, you have really um, given your time as much as possible and uh, we obviously thank you for all that that you have done for the community and where you were 
and also helping us out even now uh, during this difficult time as we are still trying to come up to a new normal. So thank you so much and uh, we look forward to having you again next week in our next episode. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Zira again. That wraps up this week's episode. Thank you, Dr. Sajoy, for going more in depth on the current COVID-19 disease and pandemic that has impacted the world for the past year and a half. Stay tuned, everyone, for next week's episode, Resources Within the Community. Be sure to give this video a like and comment below if you have any questions or suggestions for our next episode. To be notified the second our video is posted, you can subscribe to our channel and click on the no notification bell icon. Or you can follow us on social media at VSurf Canada, where we will give you all the updates. See you next week. Bye.